Tag und willkommen zu dieser neuesten Ausgabe von Tourismus Namibia. Das ist natürlich unsere Show, wo wir Ihnen einmal in der Woche Nachrichten bringen und dann natürlich auch verschiedene Urlaubsideen vorstellen. Mein Name ist Frank Steffen, wie Sie am Bildschirm erkennen können. Und äh, wir haben uns heute absichtlich den Harabdam da ausgesucht. Das ist eine Aufnahme. Ich bin mir nicht ganz sicher, die entstand entweder 2017 oder 2018. Und damals hieß es so, leer wird der Harabdam nie wieder und jetzt momentan steht er trocken. Ja, aber das nur am Rande. Also wie gesagt, wir haben da wieder Topics, wir haben also unsere Themen, danach Destinations, also unsere Urlaubshinweise und dann am Ende noch to the point. Als erstes natürlich die Topics. In den Themen der Woche haben wir diesmal als erstes unsere NWA dabei. NWA ist natürlich Namibia Wildlife Resorts, also unsere staatlichen Rastlager. Betreiber und die lokalen Buchungen für die Festtagssaison 2024 bei Namavia Wildlife Resorts, also NWA, wie wir das immer nennen, haben einen deutlichen Anstieg gezeigt, was auf ein wachsendes Interesse der Namibia hinweist, ihr eigenes Land zu erkunden. Äh, laut NWR-Sprecher Nelson Malashipala zeigen aktuelle Buchungsanalysen, dass Namibia die häufigsten Besucher ihrer Rastplätze sind. Und die meisten Buchungen im Dezember 2024 und Januar 2025 ausmachen. Er erklärte, dass dieser Anstieg mit den laufenden Bemühungen von NWA zusammenhängt, den lokalen Tourismus zu fördern und Reisen für Namibia durch Initiativen wie die NEM Leisure Karte und spezielle Rabatte zugänglicher zu machen. Laut dem Buchungsbericht für Dezember 2024 trugen Namibia mit 12,8 Prozent zur Auslastung bei, gefolgt von Südafrikanern mit 2,5 Prozent und deutschen Staatsbürgern an dritter Stelle. Im Januar 2025 setzt sich dieser Trend fort, wobei Namibia mit 8 Prozent Auslastung die Führung behalten, gefolgt von Südafrikanern und Deutschen. <lacht> Tut mir leid. Ja, und das ist natürlich ganz gut, dass man sieht, dass unsere lokalen Leute doch wieder den Tourismus unterstützen. Und da kann man Ihnen nur viel Erfolg wünschen, denn eigentlich ist es ja auch ein kleiner Hinweis darauf, dass NWA so langsam seine Sachen wieder in Ordnung bringt. War ja oft eine Beschwerde, dass diese, diese verschiedenen Orte total ja, kaputt sind, also überhaupt nicht unterhalten werden. Und ich weiß, dass gerade der Nelson Ashipala sehr viel Wert darauf gelegt hat, dass sich das ändert. So darf man hoffen, dass es so Stück für Stück tatsächlich soweit ist. Ja, und dann wollen wir uns ein bisschen mehr über die Elefanten unterhalten. Und zwar gibt es da eine neue Studie, die hat halt 53 Jahre Daten analysiert, also hinsichtlich der Elefantenpopulation in Afrika. Und die hat festgestellt, dass Lebensraumverlust und Wilderei dramatische Rückgänge bei afrikanischen Elefanten verursacht haben. Ich denke, daran ist eigentlich gar nicht mal so viel neu. Die Studie, also im Englischen heißt es Survey Based Inference of Continental African Elephant Decline. Also es ist eben eine deutliche Studie über die, den, die, die abnehmenden Elefantenzahlen, äh, veröffentlicht in, der, in, in dem Magazin Proceedings of the National Academy of Science. Äh, betonte also, dass es eine Herausforderung sei, die tatsächliche Anzahl auf dem gesamten Kontinent zu messen und Veränderungen zu überwachen. Laut der Studie sind zwischen 1964 und 2016 die Bestände der Waldelefanten im Durchschnitt um 90 Prozent und die der Savannenelefanten um 70 Prozent gesunken. Insgesamt gingen die Populationen um durchschnittlich 77 Prozent zurück. Die Studie nutzte Erhebungsdaten von 475 Standorten in 37 Ländern, darunter Namibia, und stellt damit die bisher umfassendste Bewertung afrikanischer Elefanten dar. Also ich denke mal, der Rückgang ist nicht neu, was ich viel äh, wichtiger auch finde, was eigentlich weniger genannt wird, dass es zum Beispiel Länder wie eben Botswana, Namibia gibt, wo diese Zahlen gewaltig zugenommen haben. Es mag zwar nur über die letzten 20 Jahre wieder passiert sein, aber ich denke doch, dass das auch wichtig ist und dass das in Relationen beschrieben werden sollte. Ja, und dann haben wir noch die COP29, das ist natürlich ganz klar, COP29 in aller Munde jetzt in der vergangenen Woche gewesen. Und äh, Namibia nimmt derzeit an dieser 29. Konferenz der Vertragsparteien des UN-Rahmenübereinkommens zu äh, Klimaänderung teil, also die vom 11. bis 22. November in Baku, Aserbaidschan stattfindet. Das ist natürlich sehr umstritten, weil das eben als ein ölproduzierendes Land gesehen wird. Unter dem Motto in Solidarität für eine grüne Welt konzentriert sich COP29 auf die Intensivierung der Bemühungen, 
Ressourcen für Entwicklungsländer bereitzustellen, um ehrgeizige Klimaziele eben zu erreichen. Sie sehen hier teilweise, das sind Fotos, wo auch Bank Windhoek mit bei ist. Sie sind unter anderem auch da. Also das Programm des Namibia Pavillons, ähm, Pavillons äh, umfasste diese Woche verschiedene Podiumsdiskussionen und Präsentationen. Themen rangierten von Stärkung der Klimamaßnahmen, Nutzung grüner Transportkorridore durch den Einsatz von CO2-Grenzabgaben aus dem EU-Mechanismus, dann Produktion des nachhaltigsten Rohölfasses auf dem Kontinent und äh, innovative Elektrifizierung ländlicher Gebiete und Gebiete an den Stadträndern Namibias durch erneuerbare Energien. Also ein ziemlich weit greifende Themen. Mehr als 65.000 Delegierte haben sich für den Gipfel registriert. Namibia entsandte insgesamt 116 Delegierte. Also schon sehr wichtig für uns. Und wir wissen ja, dass Namibia ganz vorne dran ist, als einer der Länder eben ein Entgelt zu fordern von den Ländern, die eben am meisten zu dem Klimawandel beitragen, indem eben die Industriestaaten gewisse Abgaben an Länder wie Namibia machen, weil eben dieses Land tatsächlich von dem Klimawandel arg betroffen wird. So, und da gibt es natürlich auch andere in Afrika, die dieselben Ansprüche stellen. Ja, und damit sind wir am Ende unserer Topics. Als nächstes haben wir Destinations. Also unter unseren Urlaubsideen oder Hinweisen haben wir heute als erstes die Sandfontaine Lodge. Und die ist im tiefen Süden Namibias, also Kalahari noch weiter runter. Hier sieht man es auf der Karte, geht hin zum Oranje-Revier runter, also der Oranje-Fluss muss man sagen. Und im Herzen einer abgelegenen und wilden Ecke eben Süden Namibias bietet dieses 97.000 Hektar große Sandfontaine Naturreservat Exklusivität für ein bis zwölf Gäste. Und das ist eben, was es so besonders macht. Die konzentrieren sich lieber auf eine kleine Menge und dafür wird die verwöhnt. Also mit einer Vielfalt an die Wildtieren, ruhigen Flüssen und Flussbetten ist es ein Ort, der die Seele berührt und alles bietet, um zur Ruhe zu kommen und die Schönheit der Natur neu zu entdecken. Wir haben natürlich auch eine Videoaufnahme für Sie da mitgebracht. Hi there! Today we find ourselves at Sandfontaine Lodge in the south of Namibia and I'm joined by Adrian Mulder over here. He is the manager of Sandfontaine. Adrian, tell us a bit about yourself. Well, thank you so much for being here with us. Um, so I'm the general manager, manager here at Sunfontaine Lodge. Also, I'm a guide. I have been for the last 15 years. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So tell me, where did you start? So I started off in South Africa, it's where I was born and raised, uh, guided there in the Limpopo province, and then met my wife actually when I was working in Rwanda. Oh, um, wow. She's Namibian. I'm South African. She had to come and steal me. Wonderful. Me I love when we import people. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. So we moved um, to Sunfontaine about three and a half years ago. Um, we actually got married here on the property and we then started working as the management couple of the mm -hmm. lodge and then later on of the entire reserve. That's wonderful. Sorry, when you say the entire reserve, can you tell me a bit about Sunfontaine? Yeah, so Sunfontaine is a reserve um, in the south of Namibia along the Orange River. Uh, we are roughly about a hundred thousand hectares big, which makes it quite a large Jeez. property. Uh, we do have wildlife roaming on the property too, um, oryx, we have giraffes, springbok, zebras, the occasional leopard every now and then Ooh, we spot some otters okay. down in the Orange River fishing as well. There's otters in there's, the Orange River? There's otters in the Orange River, Wonderful, yeah. I've never seen them. No, they're quite rare but they're beautiful. Aww, is it the ones that hold hands? Yes. Cute! <laughs> Obviously the ones okay. that hold hands, yeah. Cute. Yeah. But um, the lodge itself, where we have got six rooms, we can accommodate up to 12 people in total okay. and we do offer this entire place as an exclusive use only. So when people come and arrive at the lodge, it will be you and your family or you and your partner that has exclusive use for the entire place, not just the room, but the entire 100,000 hectares. And the entire team will look after you and with all the different activities that we have here on offer, so scenic drives, we do walking tours as well, um, canoeing on the Orange River, um, camping if people are also interested in doing some wild camping out in the bush. That's wonderful. Sorry, did I understand that correctly? If I book this place with my husband, even if we just book one room, we have the whole Saint Fontaine to ourselves. That's correct. That is wonderful. I've not heard of places that do that yet. That's absolutely amazing. And I heard you said you do scenic drives, you do walks. There's a lot of different mountains around us. 
Can you tell me about this kopi? Can I climb this kopi? Is there a significance? Why is this in our shot today? Yeah, so, yeah, this is a very important hill, um, and you can climb it, you can walk it, preferably with one of the guides or myself. Okay. But this is actually the kopi or the hill where the first battle during the First World War in 1914 took place between the South African Union and Southwest Germany. So this, that's why you said earlier this is an historical site as well. Exactly, yes. That's amazing. There's that's all really the way cool. up onto the hill there, there's still the rock walls that have been built. Um, every now and then you still find artifacts, but that's why we keep everything as is, hence why we do it with a guide. That is absolutely amazing. And tell me, do you guys offer dinners in the bush or is everything here at the lodge? We mix and match it up as okay. well. So depending on the weather, we do dinners outside in the bush. We do camping outside as well if people request or they would like to do so. Um, otherwise, people enjoy this area here at the lodge. It's nice and open. Um, we've got the swimming pool here in the back and people can just come and enjoy it. Sometimes dinners are outside, sometimes dinners are inside. That's beautiful. I saw last night in my room that you've also got a bed outside. Yes. Can you tell us about that? Do people sleep outside? Actually, we've had more people sleep outside than inside the room. That, so if last night wasn't as cold <laughs> as it was, I would have slept outside. It's no, beautiful. Exactly. No, it's a stunning thing. It's, we've got the tents that actually act a little bit as a barrier with the outside elements. However, it does not uh, stop you from actually looking at the sky. Yes, the stars here are beyond. No. Because there's very little light pollution, it's wonderful. Exactly. And I also saw that there's outside showers. I, I saw it at my one. Do all of the rooms have outside showers? All of them have got outside showers. That's as well. amazing. It's so private. It's absolutely stunning here. Um, could you tell me about the community involvement of Saint Fontaine? Are you guys related in any way to Carisburg? So for those of you watching, Saint Fontaine is 110 kilometers south of Carisburg. So I assume that's where you guys would get all of your supplies going to town each day. Yeah, so that's our main supply point, if I can call it that. Um, and we do use and work with the community itself. We've also signed an MOU with a company called the Orange River Karoo Conservation Area. And they do a lot more of the community involvement where we also benefit from getting our staff um, to actually come from the community itself. We do have an upliftment program in the Varambad community. We've donated some computers to the school. Okay. And um, it's in the process of actually enhancing the broader um, education program for the kids in Varambad. But it's not only focused on the kids, it's also for adults that want to better their education. That's wonderful. Wow. That's really, really cool because I think that if we can combine projects with education and investing back into our youth and encourages people to stay in the country to work in our country instead of always wanting to go more international exactly. to look for job opportunities because the opportunities here are beyond exactly There's, it's endless and tell me um your guides that you spoke about are they local guides how do you get them involved yeah, so we are actually in the process of training up a few of the guides that come from the local area and they are considered to be more of game guards looking after the environment, making okay. sure that everything is functioning properly on the reserve. Um, and then I am the main guide here at the lodge mm -hmm. at the moment, um, but we are integrating and trying to get some local talents to come and take over the role. That's perfect. Here. That sounds wonderful. Well, thank you very, very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Please, guys, if you ever get the opportunity, do come and visit San Fontaine Lodge. You will not be disappointed, I promise. Ja, und das ist Sandfontaine und ich muss da immer wieder zugeben, ich staune dann so ein bisschen. Die sind tatsächlich so, die lassen nur eine Partei dazu manchmal. Also das ist, war dann tatsächlich so, dass wir dann von denen hörten, nee, wenn wir da eine Familie, also zwei Familien, die zusammen da ankommen und sich da ausruhen wollen, dann nehmen wir keine weiteren Buchungen entgegen. Also das kann tatsächlich sehr exklusiv sein. Also muss man sich natürlich erkundigen. Ich bin mir ziemlich sicher, dass es da auch andere Regelungen gibt, die man machen kann oder also treffen kann. Ja, das war unser Sandfontaine. Das ist heute unsere einzige Destination. Wir haben als nächstes To The Point. Ja, unter the, to the Point haben wir Team Namibia, die sich ein bisschen einsetzt fürs Land, wie schon der Name verspricht. Also Team Namibia hat diese Kampagne Travel Local ins Leben gerufen, um Namibia davon zu überzeugen, in der Ferienzeit lokale Reiseziele zu wählen. Äh, Edwina Besaidnout von NMH, also das ist meine Kollegin, sprach mit dem Sprecher von Team Namibia, das ist der Mali Hamunjebo. Und äh, so haben wir eben mehr erfahren. Gucken Sie einfach sich das Video an.
Good afternoon viewers, it's Edwina Basaid not here with our public relations liaison from Team Namibia. Hi Mali. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing good, how are you? I'm great, thank you. Um, we're here to discuss just the launching or the relaunching rather of Team Namibia's travel local campaign. I am so eager to hear it. Um, please go ahead and introduce yourself. Give us a bit of a scope of what exactly you do um, at and with Team Namibia. And then you can dive on in at the deep end and tell us all about the travel local campaign. Perfect. So my name is Melia Mujibo. I am the Corporate Communications Officer of Team Namibia. So with Team Namibia, what we do is we promote Namibian products and services. So we want you to choose Namibian products or services as part of your everyday life and choice. So within that, that's how we started to uh, start the Travel Local campaign. This was an initiative um, that was brought to light years ago, I would say about seven years ago, right. but it needed time for us to really see the need for it. Hmm. And we thank COVID-19 because that alone gave us the, the, the true definition of why we need to understand domestic tourism in yeah. general. Oh, so that's how we came up with the Travel Local campaign. Beautiful. Um, I was going to ask what inspired it, um, mm. but the fact that COVID and the fact that we were really locked in mm. our homes for so long and we couldn't even really travel locally, mm. yeah, um, that is a very, very beautiful initiative. But my question and what I've been thinking about since we spoke about it initially is how do you think it will affect domestic tourism? How do you think it will impact domestic tourism particularly? I know I can say I think it's going to like be a pro productive or positive mm -hmm. impact but with that said how are they like are there particular factors that you think will come into play once it has been like launched and established yes definitely so look let's look at the bigger picture the mm -hmm. bigger picture is when we look at Namibia as a whole, it's a it's not only rich in its uh, um, di like in diamonds and etc. Mm -hmm. We are rich in our vegetation True. very much. So if you go towards the north, complete opposite from yeah. how it is from the south. Yeah. Vegetation completely different. The culture is completely different. What is a norm within Vinduk mm -hmm. is not a norm in the north. Yeah. So that alone is why we are encouraging domestic tourism. Yeah. We want to be able to speak and boast and proudly speak about our country yeah. if we have to speak to someone else. It was quite a, a, a bummer last time I heard about the skeleton, skeleton coast mm -hmm. from a foreigner and oh. I was amazed and I'm an Arabian mm. born and raised within yeah. Banduk. It, it's not supposed to be that way. Yeah, it's not. We don't want um, to, to, to necessarily encourage uh, um, domestic tourism. We want to encourage Namibianism. We mm. want to encourage the feeling of feeling Beautiful. proud yeah. to not only speak about your own culture, but also speak about um, the Herero and Tamaranama. Mm. And even if you're not going depth, you can proudly say that this is their beliefs, this is their cultural the things you know about. Exactly. Yeah. And if we do see someone else doing something wrong within our country, yeah. we can proudly stand together and say, this is not what we do in our country, mm. because this we know our country and we understand yeah. it. That is the bigger Beautiful. picture. Tour, uh, domestic tourism is definitely part of the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. um, a fear that I have to this regard becomes we are very, very culturally versed country. Mm. Extremely, our tribes are very in their tribes, you know. Um, how are sustainability and cultural preservation factors um, that are looked at during this launch of Travel Local? Because we are not only encouraging domestic travel mm -hmm. this within itself encourages internationals to come to namibia and to know about namibia but how do we preserve our cultures our tribes our people and mm, ensure that it's a sustainable campaign mm -hmm. you know that the people are kept well enough that they can sustain themselves their areas that the people that other people are coming to look at mm -hmm. how are those factors being taken into consideration okay so we with, with the travel local campaign, mm. we don't really have much power, yeah. unfortunately, to make a major difference. Yeah. But our partners do. Perfect. So we have partnered with Namibia Tourism Board. We have uh, partnered with Hospitality Association of Namibia mm -hmm. and many other amazing institutions. So we, through them, are speaking louder in the name of domestic tourism. Yeah. How do we sustain uh, our culture? Mm -hmm. um, through understanding. Yeah. If uh, I always go back to the Bible, and the Bible says that people lack because of lack of wisdom. Hmm. People perish because of lack of wisdom. So if we don't understand our own culture, how do we 
plan on sustaining it. Mm. There are many indigenous knowledge within the country. We have different, different, diverse cultures, mm -hmm. beautiful and very different within each own, mm -hmm. within, in within, all of the years. Yeah. So if we don't understand it, it will not make how can sense. We implement? How can we implement yeah. sustainability and keeping, making sure that each, uh, um, through the travel local campaign, mm -hmm. everyone benefits from it. Mm -hmm. So that's why within the campaign, we don't only want to, um, to uh, advertise or bring awareness to the destination. We yeah. also speak on how you get there. So mm -hmm. we also speak on transportation. Mm -hmm. And also, again, when you do arrive at the specific destination, what do you learn? What mm -hmm. do you find there? You find culture, you find food, you find clothing. We want to spread awareness towards that mm -hmm. so that we can also, as a people, understand one another. Mm -hmm. That alone, I believe, can bring uh, uh, definitely sustain our culture and also keep our indigenous knowledge within ourselves. I hope I really did. No, you really did. Um, what has been one of the biggest challenges you guys have faced with regard to this um, because I know you haven't launched on platforms outside of social media mm -hmm. officially um, so how are we asking the local communities the locals the people that know these things to promote this campaign to be a part of this campaign how as a Namibian who knows about these things can I become part of promoting the travel local campaign Yes, definitely. Everyone is an ambassador of the Travel Local Campaign. Mm -hmm. as, lo as long as you choose to choose Namibia as your preferred destination, mm -hmm. automatically you become an ambassador of uh, the Travel Local Campaign. Mm -hmm. How do you support? Definitely by using the hashtag, hashtag Travel Local. Mm -hmm. You don't know how much impact you can bring through your post or through that hashtag. Mm -hmm. That alone, we welcome everyone to always use the Travel Local, uh, travel local hashtag. Mm -hmm. um, the challenges we faced is definitely trying to uh, bring a sense of trust. Okay. Um, it's 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 quite difficult because each um, institution has their different um, pricing. Yeah. And some institutions, unfortunately, and hopefully it will change in the near future, mm -hmm. they don't have domestic prices. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. And that's the challenges we face because that's the first. Uh, um, comment we get yeah. in most of the time. The pricing and, and the rates of exchange. Exactly. Yeah. And we really, really cannot, again, like I said, directly impact that, yeah. but we can indirectly impact it yeah. through partnering with those institutions and try to encourage them to have domestic prices. Yeah. And in the process, we also do spread awareness about the domestic prices that we have that are already existing. For example, with Now Gondwana, mm -hmm. we have your card. NWR or just because you are Namibian, even mm -hmm. if you don't have the card, just mm -hmm. because you're Namibian, you get you get 25% off. Beautiful. So there are many more that I'm not mentioning right now and we want to bring awareness to that. So it's not only for us to encourage the locals, but we also want to encourage the, the institutions so that they can become part of the travel local campaign and mm -hmm. also encourage them to have domestic prices so that the whole word of traveling local becomes easy for all of us. Okay, beautiful. Um, in conclusion, Mali, in conclusion, mm -hmm. um, what has been your favorite travel experience in Namibia that you would recommend? Your, your absolute favorite. That you are, that's the one thing that you would go and tell people, I think you guys should go and see this mm. place. What is that place for you? I, I don't know because I'm from the north. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we love Leisure. We love a beautiful place where you can relax with a swimming pool mm -hmm. and amazing dinner and a buffet. Mm -hmm. But I love things that are different, that are like a hidden gem. Um, oh, yeah. So I cannot really necessarily say exactly what my favorite is, mm -hmm. but there are so many hidden gems within the south. Yeah. You will be shocked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you will not find it on bookings.com, mm -hmm. but they are amazing lodges and like different uh, um, hot, hot, hot spots, mm -hmm. hot, hot springs, hot springs, yeah. hot springs mm -hmm. in many places in the north. Yeah. Don't even let me start on that. Oh, yeah. Beautiful places where as soon as you get there, they can teach you about their culture. Okay. There's a place also in the south where they have like a whole rock with engravings mm -hmm. on it speaking on the different cultures within the sun people mm. and i'm speaking under correction mm. that alone is a traveling experience so if you're not a person if you're like me and you're not really into um the mostly the leisure part of it mm -hmm. let's explore together let's find the hidden gems yeah that's my conclusion that's my favorite place to go yeah. anyway namabia same 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 <laughs> um thank you so much mali for your time um I am so happy that you actually took the time out to give us some more insight on this because this is 
this is a beautiful campaign. This is one for the books that I think could actually make a much bigger impact than we can see at the moment. Mm. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for letting me know for the platform to share this on. Like, thank you so much for the correspondence always. Um, yeah. And this is a beginning to something. <laughs> yes, it is actually. Um, from myself, Edwina, have a lovely evening. Goodbye. That Edwina. Ja, und das war unser Team Namibia, die sich eben einsetzt äh, zugunsten Namibias, ganz klar. Und wie wir heute schon gesehen haben, unter dem NDR-Thema war ja auch einiges. Also wäre ja schön, wenn man tatsächlich von beiden Seiten wieder was auf die Reihe bringt. Der Vorwurf wird immer lauter, dass nach der Covid-Zeit die meisten Lodges sehr schnell wieder vom lokalen Tourismus vergessen haben. Und ich muss sagen, das ist tatsächlich so. Es gibt einige Lodges die groß versprochen hatten, dass sie von jetzt ab immer sich ein bisschen um den lokalen Tourismus also bemühen werden. Und das Versprechen scheint längst vergessen zu sein, muss ich leider sagen. Es wird der eine oder andere da sein, der das nicht gerne hört, aber es muss gesagt werden. Ja, wir sind am Ende der Show angelangt. Ich hoffe, Sie ein wenig unterhalten zu haben und hoffe ferner, dass wir uns in einer Woche wiedersehen. Bis dann. Tschüss.